Our artist in this edition is Jen or Jenna. Um, we're in her very creative and very interesting studio on uh, Leisure Isle, and she is well a little bit of a jack of all trades in the field of art. Um, we're looking more, more at clothing, but I'm going to ask her to describe silk screening. Tell us about what you do. Well, I started making clothes um, when I was probably in about high school. Um, always had a bit of a love-hate relationship with fashion, you know, and I'd go into shops and there was nothing in there that I wanted to wear, so I'd start cutting up t-shirts and sticking pins through things and scribbling on them, mm -hmm. um, and that sort of led me to making clothing. I've always wanted to learn to silkscreen print, um, okay. and I did that for about two years, um, just as a sort of hobby. Um, did, you, and did you study? No, I never studied screen? anything. Um, I just sort of started doing it. Taught yourself then. Yeah, self-taught. Um, and one day I came to Nisner and ended up just doing it for a living. So. And how long have you been doing this? Um, commercially for a year uh, that I've been making clothes to sell. But um, you know, as I said, ever since I was in high school, I've been making and cutting and experimenting and cutting up the curtains and that sort of thing. Okay. So your preferred medium really is fabrics. Yeah, fabrics. Fabrics and. Is it paint that's used for silk screen? Um, it's yeah, not. paint, uh, ink, um, anything. You know, I've even tried the silk screening with um, like a, a watered down chocolate mixture, <laughs> you know, tea, anything you know that will make colour. So. Okay, and uh, we've got your, your clothing behind us, which is which is highly creative. What is the process behind that? I mean, I know it's quite difficult to ask. Um, an artist, you know, what what inspires them, which is an awful question to ask, but oh, it's an awful question. I'm not going to ask you that, but um, let me ask this way: Do you find a piece of fabric first, and then decide that this is the pattern you're going to use? What is your sort of process? Um, because I because I enjoy doing the printing, I I usually always start by finding the print first. You know, okay. doing the drawing um, and getting the actual screen together. Um, and that's actually what led me to clothing because, you know, I'd started silk screening and I had all these prints and I thought, well, now where to put them? And so, you know, clothing was the thing that made the most sense. Clothes my market store, I'm distributing to shops now. Um, I've got two shops in Nisner, Dry Tube and uh, Pure India um, as retail outlets. Um, and two shops in Mpumalanga that are just sort of starting out and, you know, taking a range of things and um, we're just trying to get it together. It's quite difficult because I do so much different, you know, some of the stuff's quite dark and it's got like a, almost a bit of a punky feel to it, mm -hmm. and the other stuff's the more sort of, you know, the batik, very colourful stuff, so mm -hmm. it's difficult to put a whole range of clothing in one place, um, okay. you know, you've got to try and fit in with the look of, of where you're really selling it. Yeah, of that particular yeah. shop. Right, okay, well, that, make, that makes perfect sense. And what about... Um, for individuals, if they want to, if they want you to actually um, make something for them on consignment or um, I, I can do. I prefer not to because you know, um, usually when somebody comes to you and they want something made, they've got a, a, an idea in their head of what they want, and it's really difficult to try and get what's in their head onto, you know, a garment of clothing. But um, every every piece that I make, you know, with t-shirts and dresses is different, um, and that's purely by accident. I try to make ones that are the same, but they just never come out. But that's quite nice, and then I make each single piece yeah, unique. Yeah, that's worked to my advantage. Lovely. So, and then where to from here? What are you What are you planning for the future? I don't even know what I'm planning for the next ten minutes most of the time. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm not really sure, you know, I'd obviously like to, to get my range out and um, um, just wherever the road takes me, you know, I'm having such a such a good time at the moment, um, every day is something new, so I'm trying not to plan too far in, a, in you know, advance, just go with it. Just go with it, that's yeah. quite nice, can't be at the end, that's how we should all be living. Yeah, mm. it's working for me. Just one other question is, um, when you work on your own and you're happy doing so, but do you ever think that you might train someone else or some other people when you do expand your work? Um, I would, I would like to um, eventually, but you know, I, I really do like the idea of just being on my own and working on my own and being in my own space. You know, I can get up and work in my pajamas if I want yeah. to. Um, 
but you know, I'll, I'll never say no. I'll never close any doors. Uh, if, if the right person came along and somebody wanted to learn, maybe. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you so much for letting us come Thank you. It's beautiful, beautiful workshop. Highly creative. Have a look at it, and um, we'll leave our details at the end of this. If anyone wants to contact you, perfect. Perhaps we'll see you all over the garden in South Africa very soon. Thank you.